Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the equivalence principle and how it's used to find insurance premiums when there are no expenses. So the equivalence principle states that the expected present value of benefits must be equal to the expected present value of premiums. So let's consider an example of this. So what we'll do is we'll consider a whole life insurance of, let's say, B, so that's your benefit, so B might be 100,000 or a million for your insurance death benefit, paid at end of year of death. Level annual premiums, level annual premiums are paid. Determine, let's find the premium P. Well, what we'll do is we'll use this equivalence principle. So what we have over here is, let's look at the timeline. So here's time zero, here's time one, here's time two, here's time three, et cetera, time n. And what happens is the following. At, starting at the inception of this policy, you'll pay a premium, P, as long as you are alive. And then, at the time of death, you'll receive a benefit of B. So what we'll do is we'll say that you will pay premiums. So let's look at the expected present value of the benefits. The expected present value of benefits is equal to B, the benefit that you get, and then the insurance, A, X. So B, A, X is the expected present value of the benefits. The expected present value of premiums is P the premium, and it's paid every year, beginning of every year, as long as you're surviving, so that's going to be an annuity due. And we equate these two expressions over here, so P times AX double dot is equal to AX times B, and therefore the premium of this discrete whole life, annu whole life, whole life insurance policy, the premium corresponding to that will be the death benefit B times AX over AX double dot. Now there's a couple different ways we can simplify this. The first way we can simplify this is to use the fact that this is B, and then I know that AX is equal to one minus A double dot X times D divided by AX double dot. So one representation we can write for this premium for this whole life insurance is B times the quantity one over AX double dot minus D. Or we can do the opposite. We can write this in terms of insurances. We can write this as B, and then I can leave AX on top, and I can write the denominator A double dot X as one minus AX over D. And of course we can simplify that. This will be B, and then on top I'll have a D AX over one minus AX. And this is the premium Either this representation for the premium or this representation for the premium tell us the equivalence principle is satisfied, and we can make modifications to this. So one particular example of a modification that can be easily made, if we change the insurance to term and your insurance, then the premium function what will happen over here, we'll get premiums up to time n, 
So that's going to be, so I'm going to, in the denominator, I'll have an ax n bar, double dot. I'll have a benefit of b, and I'll get that benefit of b up to a time of n. So I'll have a term insurance expression on top here. And this ratio can be modified by a number of different ways. We can have term, we can have n payments in the bottom. I can change this to deferred. If I want to have a deferred policy, I could have the same thing in the denominator, ax double dot n, and I could push this death benefit past n years. There's a variety of different ways to compute these premiums, but the fundamental first principle is that the expected present value of benefits is the expected present value of premiums, and when you equate those two, you'll be able to compute premiums of any insurance policy. Thank you very much.